context and data flow diagram sample 7 voicemail so what is voicemail now voicemail is similar to a digital version of an answering machine where it allows communication between users by someone essentially calling a person them not answering the phone they leave a message and then that message is forwarded to the user's telephone system so these days it's mostly mobile phones but some people still get them forwarded to their landlines as well okay the message is stored on the voicemail system and can only be retrieved by the intended receiver of that message so how's that done in order to receive the voicemail message a user dials into the voicemail system using their telephone and then they enter their account number or password with the keypad on the phone after they enter the voicemail system, they're then able to listen to their messages. Okay, the messages are usually played in a reverse chronological order. So um, the most recent message is usually first and then it goes backwards from there. And they have options and what they do with those messages. They can repeat the message by pressing a certain button on the keypad. They can save the message so they can listen to it again later. But more than likely, they're going to delete the message after they've heard it because they know, okay, I've got to ring that person back. Okay, and then they do so straight away. So as said here, they enter and their commands into the system using the phone's keypad. Okay, one thing to point out too, through the data being digital these days with voicemail, the messages can also be forwarded to other mediums such as an email, okay, and it's sent as an email attachment to the person's email address. But we're not really going to look at that aspect today. We're going to stick to the traditional system of uh, the person accessing the voicemail inbox through their phones. So let's first look at this as a context diagram. And here it is, our voicemail system. And what we have first is our actual caller. Okay, the person trying to ring someone and that person doesn't answer the phone. So if they're ringing someone, they're entering the person's phone number. Okay, and obviously the person doesn't answer the phone. And so then they're redirected to the voicemail inbox. Okay, once the uh, inbox begins, okay, the voicemail system begins, okay, they hear the user's personal message. So it might be, sorry, I can't make it to the phone right now. Please leave a message. Now, if they're using a personalized message, that usually goes first. And then after that, the actual voicemail gives some instructions as well to clarify, please leave your message after the tone. Okay, sometimes it's just a, a personalized message on its own. Sometimes it's just the voicemail giving all the instructions itself. So it's some sort of combination of those two outputs from the system. Once the caller hears that, okay, they then speak their message into the system, which is then recorded by the system. Now, on the other end is obviously the user, the person who owns the actual voicemail uh, that the system is using. Okay, they want to hear their actual messages. So the first thing they need to do is enter their voicemail pin to access the system. Once they enter the pin, as I said before, they begin hearing the messages that are left for them. Okay, usually the most recent message first. Okay, once they've heard the message, okay, they're then told commands by the system what they can do with that message. Okay, so it'll tell them um, certain keypad presses uh, uh, to press on their actual phone, and that will obviously do something to that message. The options that are pretty general to all those, as I said in the description, okay, is that they can replay the message, okay, so play the message again, and fictionally, just off the top of my head, I've said that could be by pressing the number three. That is the data that needs to be entered into the system for them to play that message again. They can keep the message to hear it again later, and that could be a key press of four on the actual keypad. And like I said, in most cases, it's just delete the message, okay? They got the instruction, they'll call the person back again, and that could be keypad press five. Okay, so look, these numbers could all be different depending on who the voicemail provider is, but that's an outline of the actual um, inputs the user can put back into the system in order to manage their voicemail messages. All right, so now let's look at it in the form of a data flow diagram. So once again, we're starting off with the caller. Okay, they've entered the phone number. No one's entered the phone, so they get redirected to the caller's voicemail inbox. Okay, once they get there, okay, it plays the voicemail message to the caller, telling him, please leave your message after the tone. Okay, now if they hang up before the actual tone plays, no message is going to be left. So essentially the data needs to carry is that the tone happens. Okay, they stay on long enough for that tone to happen. And then it obviously begins recording the voicemail message of the caller. Okay, so it, the caller is going to speak into it and they're going to leave their message. Hey, it's Chris. Sorry, um, I didn't get back to you. Please call me back when you can. Okay, and remember that actual audio spoken into a phone is obviously 
goes in as audio, okay, but then it needs to be digitized, okay? So the spoken message needs to be digitized, okay? And obviously put into a specific format. It needs to be created in so, as some sort of record, okay? So then it can be stored in the actual voicemail inbox, okay? So the voicemail message would get stored in the voicemail inbox as a record. It needs to be timestamped because as I said, these messages usually play with the most recent message played first, okay? And it usually says the time, uh, the timing of when the message was left at the beginning of the message, and then it's followed by the actual voicemail voicemail message of the actual caller. All right, so that's obviously the side of the caller entering in a voicemail message, okay, for the user. So then how does the user then access this message? So what they need to do, obviously said, is they enter their PIN, okay, they dial into their voicemail inbox, okay, they get access to the inbox, and then from here they can open their messages. Okay, in order for the me messages to be played, okay, it gets the first message, the most recent message from the voicemail inbox, and it begins playing the first voicemail message. Okay, once they've heard that message, okay, they get listened to it, and that comes back to the user. They are then given their options. Okay, so the voicemail message is completed. Okay, display voicemail uh, keypad options. Okay, and this is obviously set, uh, said back to the user. Okay. They hear that through their speaker, and then the user can then use the keypad to input commands at this stage. So we've already said what those options are when we looked at it in the context diagram. The first one could be they want to hear the message again. It might have been noisy, they didn't hear the message correctly, so they press three on the keypad, they hear the message again, and it just plays the same voicemail message, okay? Exactly the same again. So that step just essentially repeats, okay? They're repeating the message. The next option would be to keep the message, okay? And in that case, the message is kept as a record on in the voicemail inbox, okay? And then it just moves on to the next message. So retrieve the next message, okay? And it plays the next message, which is retrieved from the voicemail inbox. And as we said, the final command is they input delete message. So they press five, the message is deleted. With that, we need to obviously delete that message from the inbox. So now it's permanently gone. So we do need to contact our data store once again. Okay, and then the process of that is move on to the next message, just as with keep message as well, okay? So I hope this gives you a bit of an understanding of how voicemail works. Essentially, we have the caller side where the caller calls in, no one answers the phone, they have to leave a message after the tone and they leave their message. That message is then uh, stored in the voicemail inbox. And then we've got the user side of things. The user dials, dials into their voicemail inbox, they hear their messages, okay, in reverse chronological order. They have the options through their keypad on their phone to either play the message again, keep the message stored in their inbox, or delete the message, and then from there, move on to their next messages. So I hope you have a better understanding of how voicemail works.